Attention crew. Attend the drill. Attention crew. Attend the drill. Jump! Jump off! Move away! To the right! Move away! Move away! We regularly carry out emergency drills. The Gulf of Mexico oil spill and the Kolsky incident are still fresh in our memories, so... During the drills, the crew acts as if it were in a real emergency and puts in 100% effort every time. An offshore drilling rig operating in the Okhotsk Sea has sunk 200 kilometers east of Sakhalin Island in Russia. The platform, which was under tow, overturned during a severe storm and sunk within minutes. 53 out of the 67 people on the platform have been declared dead. The Kolska incident has been pronounced the worst disaster in the history of Russian offshore drilling. I worked at the Kolskaya rig. Several months after I left the rig, it sank while being towed from the drill site. A guy I'd been at university with died there. Some of the guys on board survived, along with the ones who didn't end up working there. It undoubtedly was a real tragedy for Russia, and especially for Murmansk, and certainly for all drillers, because that could have happened to any of us. Of course, the Kolskaya tragedy came as a complete shock to everyone. No one imagined anything like that could happen. A lot of my friends worked there. I still can't believe it. When my son was on an internship, he made a good impression on his superiors and was offered a job at the Kolskaya rig. But one of the boss's sons was taken on instead of him and went to work there in place of my son. He went down with the rig and his body was never found. This is the largest gas field on the Sakhalin shelf. The treasure that these men risked their lives to find is buried three kilometers below the cold water. This is the purest gas Russia can produce, and it's worth billions of dollars. Alexander, what are you up to? Turn away. What are you doing? This is a costly race. For this job, the guys need to dig deep, and they need a sixth sense to be able to find that elusive blue gold. The Polar Star rig has only 30 days to drill a 3,000 meter deep borehole and find gas. Not once in all my life have we been able to finish work in time. This isn't just a race against time. It's a constant battle against technical problems and personal demons. It's tough work for real men who have to be determined to overcome any challenge. Sergei Karahorkin, driller. Stop! 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 Alexei Grislov, drilling foreman. Guys! You can see he's struggling. Go and help him. What are you standing around for? Help the man. Alexander Lechukov, assistant driller. We're working on deck with the seamen. They're delivering our cargo. Now they're transferring a basket. Piotr Deshkovich, bosun. Dmitry, what progress? Where are you? Dmitry Lobanov, seaman. No traces of fire found. Must be a false alarm or something. In the platform. The gas field we are exploring here is potentially very rich. At one time, there were some foreign platforms operating here. Russia hadn't started any work in this area. Our semi-submersible is the first rig of its kind for Russia and one of the first in the world. That's why we call it the Polar Star. What the hell are you doing there? I'm tired of running back and forth.
Each operation takes a very long time to finish. The action safety plans and general crew duties are discussed thoroughly. Well, you'll hear for yourself soon. Here's the task. After the descent, we'll start drilling. The drilling foreman and the driller are in charge. Everything OK? If anything happens... Have you counted? Report to the driller at once, and he should report to us. This is the Polar Star's first working day. The drillers hope that in a month's time, they'll strike gas and hit the jackpot. They have no idea what problems they're going to face along the way. From a violent storm to a blowout that could threaten the entire rig. This is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. We should be honest with ourselves. People die, ships and platforms sink. It's inevitable. Take care, our families are waiting for us back home. And don't distract the driller. Alexander, listen. Take extreme care with points three and four because of the seawater. Should any problems arise, report over the radio immediately. Be very careful. Sergei Harahorkin leads the seven-man crew. He has his own unique style of team management. Just like in military service, he expects every order to be obeyed unconditionally. If you hit it, adjust course manually and switch to reverse. Turn the chisel to the right. Two right turns. Stop! Stop! Don't do anything. Sergei was born to become a drilling foreman. It's true that he can be rough at times, but at the end of the day it all pays off. Turn the chain spanner. Turn here. Prepare the spanner. I'll pick it up, you pull it tight, and then prepare another spanner as well. Sergei Harahorkin is like an octopus. He spreads his tentacles everywhere and controls everything in every part. Tie the safety rope to the spanner. Have you forgotten to do it or what? The Polar Star is the first drilling rig in Russia able to operate at depths of up to 7.5 kilometers. This iron and steel construction weighs almost 60,000 tons, and it's as high as a 36-story building. Alexander Leshukov, answer the driller. I'll kick you all out of the bloody cabin. Stop babbling and get down to work. Alexei, come here. We're making a checklist for the gas lift equipment. You have to fill it in. I'm almost done here. Don't distract the driller. No, of course not. Couldn't that be settled beforehand? I was just asking. Don't then. Leave the cabin. The work is about to start. We don't have time. Faster. The sooner we start, the sooner we finish. Goodbye. And why is he doing nothing? So I asked. He answered, but nothing has changed. Is the pipe being delivered? Yes. If it is, let's accept it. Why are you shouting at me? What? What? I've called Alexander, but he's not answering. What can I do? If Alexander's not answering, call someone else. What are you, a baby? Alexei is quite a young foreman. Some members of the crew think he's too young, but he wouldn't have been appointed here without reason. Drillers and assistant drillers are all mature men. Alexei Grizlov must find it hard to work in such an environment. Being so young himself, he has to give orders to seasoned workers. This job requires a united crew, exceptional courage and understanding, which is often missing. Here's the glue. Take it. Glue at least two coins and prepare wedges. Where are the wedges? Bring them here. Spread some lithol on it. It doesn't matter. The main thing is the coins will stick. Golden, just like the borehole. It's a tradition we have to make the borehole bring a fortune. And the drilling runs smoothly.
while the drillers prepare to get to work, a new bosun with a new sea crew is making his way towards the Polar Star. Each shift on the Polar Star consists of 40 seamen. For the next 30 days, these men will work 12 hours every day to help the drillers in their search for gas. Come, who should I sit with? Piotr, move a little. Do you want to sit with me? I'll get bored alone. Bored? Yeah. Who would have thought? Let's sort. OK, about what? Don't worry about the Pelican boat. It's got a six-metre draft, so... It'd be even worse than... A roller coaster. Yes, yes. The bosun is the senior hand on deck. He gives the seamen their orders, decides how to distribute cargo and where to move the drilling equipment. The sailors will have to go through customs and then travel for another 24 hours on a small passenger boat called the Pelican. Up to 60 people can travel to the rig on the Pelican. The long journey will give the sailors time to discuss the latest news or perhaps enjoy a good sleep before starting their long shifts on the rig. The only thing we should be afraid of now is the low pressure area. It's moving in front of us and we need it to keep moving at the same speed because if it slows down, we'll find ourselves in a tricky position. As the Pelican approaches the Polar Star, the rig is fully prepared for operations to begin. Let's hope everything will go the way it should. Knock on wood. Let's wish everyone good luck. Drilling boreholes is no easy task. First, a nine meter long pipe is lowered into the ground. Nine meters later, another pipe is attached to the first. 350 pipes later, and the borehole has reached a depth of three kilometers. Now we're drilling a pilot borehole. If any problem crops up, we'll still have a second chance. Even at this section, we encounter some gas while we're drilling the pilot borehole. We'll still have to eliminate the section, build segmental bridges, and move the rig to the next drill site. Guys, I've forgotten to throw in the coins. Damn it. In their haste, the crew makes a stupid mistake. And so the drilling that has only just begun has to be stopped. Alexander, come to the cabin, please. Come here. Take the drill hose clamp off. We've forgotten to measure sea depth. Take it off and then put it in place again. Why do it there when you can stand here where it's much more comfortable? Turn the clamp and put the screws here. Why are you mucking about under the widest part? That's the widest part. Turn the clamp here and put it in place from here. Here, right? A bit higher. As high as possible. I'll stretch the clamp. Now take it off. The drillers are vulnerable to three major dangers. They could be hit by a half-ton spanner or a steel chain, or even get crushed by equipment weighing up to 10 tons. We manual workers always put ourselves in danger because we, as well as repairmen and equipment technicians, deal with pressure and all sorts of mechanisms and devices, which puts us in danger of being injured. Every day we put ourselves at risk as we work in explosion-prone areas, still, the most important rule is to do your job properly and constantly be on alert. A 26-year-old Alexander Lishukov has a university degree and is fascinated by technology. He wants to know everything. And if he wants to know more, he'll search the internet, for example, to learn more on how a particular process works in, say, other companies. His curiosity is what drives him forward. Drilling will take the crew more than a month. In the end, with the help of pipes of different calibers put together in a drill pipe stand, we will reach the gas lying more than 3,000 meters deep under the sea. 
If it goes on at this pace, we'll be the first in Russia to drill and get an underwater borehole up and running. Drilling's about to begin for the second time. If they fail now, the already tight schedule will be at risk. Everyone is focused on the work at hand. If they don't start drilling today, the company will incur huge losses, meaning their large bonuses will fly out of the window. I'm listening. I'm channeling the water now, 160 cubic meters. Which pump will you use? Number three. Okay. We use seawater, which is safe for the environment. To get rid of rock, we use a special solution. While Sergei watches his assistants, a special device monitors what's happening underwater. The computer reveals whether drilling should be faster or slower. It's doing 15 turns per second. The speed will gradually increase, and soon you won't be able to see the pipe turning. It will do 150, 200, 250 turns per second, buzzing like a drill, and go down. The drill tip only reaches the seabed by the end of the shift. Today we've started making a borehole. We drilled a pilot hole first, and now we're going to keep building the borehole to reach the productive layer in 30 days. It's not an easy task. We have to finish work on time because each delay and unproductive time means significant losses for our company. Back aboard the Pelican, the new crew has reached the Polar Star. Now, sailors face another challenge. They have to get from the boat onto the rig. What else do you need? I could do with a flak jacket. Any personal protection would be handy. Whatever you have, bring it here. Your ears will hurt. More drilling equipment and food are first to be transferred to the Polar Star. Before at last reaching the rig, the bosun gives his final instructions to the crew. This is no job for the faint of heart. One false step and you could easily fall from a great height into the icy waters of the Sea of Ochotsk. Pyotr Deshkovich spent nearly 24 hours aboard the boat, but has no time to rest now. He has to take over the watch. The first steps. Come on, we're inside. The upper deck. Hello, hello. <coughs> My lovely cabin. That's our humble dwelling. Hello. Hey, how are you? Fine. Look at your beard. You look impressive. So, was it bumpy? Yes, just a little. Oh, because here it was storming. And yesterday? Well, I don't know. We only had some small waves. Well, the day before yesterday, the waves were six metres high. It was quite frightening, you know. I see. I'm going to change my clothes. See you. The Polar Star's cabins can't provide any luxury. They offer just enough for the basic necessities for a 30-day tour of duty. Each cabin can accommodate two crew members. We all share rooms apart from the captain and the head of the rig, who have their own cabins. These are our work tools. We never go on deck without them because the field of view is small and we must always have a radio close at hand. Without them, you can't communicate to the crane operator or the bridge. I must have my keys somewhere. 
Each cabin has a toilet and a shower cubicle. Now I'm going to get my work clothes. I describe our boatswain, Piotr Diskovich, as both a competent specialist and a good colleague. He's an experienced sailor, a top-class professional, who will always lend you a hand or give a relevant piece of advice. He is a level-headed, smooth-tempered man, and he's a dab hand in his field. He was meant for this job. There's so much to be done that the bosun has only a few moments to change into his work clothes. Each member leaves his stuff here in the storage room after a crew changeover. All the other things I keep downstairs in the closet. My name, my name. Down, down. Stop. The sailors are already hard at work. Seaman Dmitry Labanov must now clear the deck to receive a new cargo. I'm a seaman. I like my job. We cope okay with the 12-hour shifts, but we were aware of what it would be like. It's hard manual work. We have to work at any time of day or night in any weather conditions, no matter if it rains or snows outside. We put the boxes and the bobbins in order. Now we have to pack them and return them to the mainland. Until next time. I've known Dmitri for ages. We've been working side by side for a year and a half since the beginning of the rig construction. He is a seasoned seaman. I wouldn't say that he's especially easygoing, but in spite of that, he's lots of fun. Whenever he comes to the bridge or we meet on deck, we exchange witty remarks, which somehow raises our spirits. My task is to even the deck out, apply a primer coat and paint it over. Handling a hammer is much trickier than, well, say, using a spoon in the canteen. But she's pretending. I'm a jack of all trades. Almost. I'm going to take a break and have a smoke. Dimitri, hi. Hello. Can you drive a car? What's the problem? The problem is that everyone's busy and there's work to be done. What needs transporting? A wardrobe and a washing machine. Well, are you moving houses or what? <laughs> have you bought a new flat? <laughs> what do you want? Just to say hello to you, Dimitri. Hello. Hello, Alexei. I have to get a helmet like yours, too. This one's too tight. There are some others. You can go and pick one out. Pyotr Dyshkovich is in a hurry. He knows the captain is waiting for him on the bridge. The toe caps should be metal, in case anything heavy falls on your foot. Crews were changed when we arrived at the rig. My counterpart Andrei is off shift, and I've assumed my duties as bosun. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. Now I'm going upstairs to receive my orders and set about fulfilling them. OK, now I'm ready to perform my duty. I'm going upstairs to the bridge. Hello, Grigori. Our bosun is a unique person. There's always some problems, but you can be sure that he will do his task efficiently and quickly. And if you're working with him, I mean, you know he'll take care of everything. It's nice. To be honest, I've never met anyone like him before. Valery, you called? Yes, Pyotr. A problem has emerged at the rig. The equipment needs to be changed immediately. Okay. 
Yes. We're off to work. Attention, Drillmaster Gruzlov, contact the bridge. With the drilling crew, okay. Next time on the platform, the hunt for the blue gold continues. Attention, the sensors on the electric service panels went off. The Polar Star is threatened by fire. Emergencies usually occur when everything is going well. And actually finding gas in just 30 days seems impossible.